What's up guys, back with another Twinmotion tutorial. I'm gonna show you how I created this rendering using Twinmotion. Let's get right into the video. All right, so as you can see here, we have a very simple open concept layout. We have a living room and we also have a kitchen area here. You may be wondering, where did I get all these assets? So you can also get these assets from Twinmotion Library. We go to objects, go to home. We have living room. We have different assets we can utilize in our scene here. We also have kitchen you can use these as well. And also use Sketchfab. So we can go to the search bar menu here and we can type in what kind of asset we're looking for and Sketchfab will have it. All right, so now that we have that down, guys, don't forget to smash that like button for me, hit that notification notification bell okay so let's get started first thing you want to do is create your image view all right so we're doing an isometric rendering you may be wondering well how did we get here so i went to this eye icon here and went to the home button we have different options so you can utilize that to get that isometric rendering view all right so now that we have that down let's go ahead and get started with our rendering so right now we have if we go to our panel we have our rendering settings and we go down to details sample per pixel it's at a very low quality let's set it to high for now and we'll make adjustments as we move forward okay so let's go to environment right now we have it selected our preset that hdri and we also have sky dome selected so right here I want to change my HDRI from this noon clear 01. We're going to go to the library and let's go to studio. As you can see here, we have different studio settings. Each one would give you a different result. So I encourage you to play around with it, see which one works best for your scene. But for this one in particular, we did use studio 27 so we can just drag and drop that onto our viewport and you're going to immediately see some results here all right so as you can see you can see how it changed our hdr changed our scene immediately which it looks pretty decent right but we are we're not done we're going to make some more adjustments here all right so now that we change our hdr we have our intensity set to 100 which is fine i do want to rotate our hdr so right now it's at 90 degrees so as you can see we can rotate that just to try to get some of these shadows and some more lighting into our 3d scenes i will change this to 165 all right so now that we have that we're going to leave our directional light to match HDR and let's see what else we can change. Now that we have that, let's go to camera and we're going to leave auto exposure check. Right now, our auto exposure is at one. Let's change that to 0 0.54. Okay. So let's look at our white balance right now the we have at 6,900 Kelvins. I want to make this scene a little more cooler right now. It has a warm tone, which looks fun, but I'm looking for more of a cooler tone. So we're going to do that, change that to 4,900. Okay. The local exposure here and let's enable that. All right. So we're going to change our highlights in our shadows. We're going to crank that all the way up to one and our shadows all the way up to one. Okay. So now that we made those adjustments, let's see what else we can do. So we have our details. We can go to the vignette. All right. So we're going to go here. We can change our vignette right now. It's at 0%. Let's change our vid vignetting to 75%. Vignetting is just going to darken our corners here. It's going to put more emphasis on our 3D scene itself. Okay. So now that we have that, we do have other options here, but I didn't utilize any of these options here. You know, I did do composition overlay, so you can utilize the grid to kind of help you get the view that you're looking for so we can increase our columns and increase our rows here this is where you can move your 3d scene your isometric to kind of line up how you want to line it up so we can add more columns add more rows i've already did this but this is just to kind of show you how did i get to this point so we're gonna keep it there okay so now that we have that let's go back to composition overlays and click none to remove our overlays okay and our grids all right so now that we have that let's go to fx and right now we have our contrast our saturation clarity and sharpness so this part is very important you can adjust your contrast and your saturation but 
we don't want to overdo it or underdo it. So I think what worked out for me was using the contrast at 45% and our saturation, we're going to make that 55%. And our clarity here, we're going to increase our clarity to 35%. We also have sharpness. I want to increase that to 25%. So as you can see, the details in our scene has come out greatly. I think that it looks pretty good. It turned out pretty good. And one thing that I do want to point out is that in our pendant lighting here above our kitchen island here, we have some spotlights that are here. And we also have a uh, strip lighting under our cabinets here right above our sink area. So we do have some lighting in some areas, but for the for the timing of this video, I didn't want to make this video very long, but just kind of pointing out some of the things that we did utilize in this scene to get the results that we gotten. Guys, don't forget to smash that like button for me, hit that notification bell. All right, so now that we have that, we're gonna to go to LUT and we can hit standard. Okay, so now that we done that one of the other things that i did is that as you can see we have a white background and we have if we click on our black background here it's it's a matte painted wall and what i did was i just went to materials to wall coverings and i went to matte painted wall so we that's the background that i have and i end up changing that to black so we're just going to go to our color picker change that we're going to bring it down to black Okay. And now we go back to our image and that looks pretty good. And the reason why I did that is because we already have our walls that are white. It was contrasting with the white background. So I wanted to make this background black, but as you can see, it turned out to be kind of a grayish color, which actually looks pretty good. Kind of grayish, a little bit of blue. And I think it brought out our scene pretty well. Guys, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Make a comment and let me know what you think. All right. So now that we have that, let's go to our image. And here we're going to make it a 8K because that we increase our output size. We always want to go to details and check mark tile rendering. All right. So now that we have that, let's go back to rendering and I want to increase my samples per pixel. Right now it's at high, but I want to increase that to 2048. Also, I want to increase my max bounce. All right, we're going to leave our fireflies at 14 and our denoiser check, our missile materials check. So I think that the image, the isometric rendering came out very well. Let me know what you think, guys. I hope you learned something today and we'll be back with another one.